So today I have a video about sending emails to your cell phone that get represented as SMS messages. And the reason why I'm even doing this is because this is something I used to do when I was younger and I was curious to see if it was still a thing. It is. And I was curious to see how you can do it in Rust. So that's what this video is about. All right, so in order to send an email to your cell phone that gets represented as an SMS message, you first need to look up whether or not your carrier supports email to SMS. And I did a quick search on DuckDuckGo, I don't really use Google, and this is one of the first things that popped up, which has the carrier and the um, email extension for the phone number. And that's typically what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the carrier. My carrier is Ting. And where I put my phone number and then the email address that's going to be associated with my phone number. Uh, one thing to note that this list, at least the one I found, may not be correct for your carrier. You may have to look it up for your carrier. For example, with Ting, you do have to, they have two email addresses, one for a GMS and one for the other type of phone connection and mine falls under the other one so i had to go look it up someplace else but first step is finding out that you can do this and then once you know you can do this to test it out you could go to your email provider whichever one you have and then send yourself in a text message via email just to make sure it works so the next portion if you want to get this done in rust is figuring out how to send an email in rust and uh, apparently we have a crate for that called letter right here. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So there's one thing that I found that was like a pitfall in terms of using letter and that is knowing which documentation to look at. So if we notice here, it says letter exact match and it has version 10 alpha 2, right? And then if you click into it, this is version 9 here. Very subtle difference. And if you look down and start looking at the example they have here, this example does not match the example that's in the repository. So if I go to the repository, which I already have open, this shows me the version I wanted to see, which is the one that was listed on the first page of the crates, uh, crate.io page. And then this example was different. Um, but outside of that pitfall of knowing which documentation to look at, Everything else seems fine. Like I took this example almost verbatim and sent an email to myself, which then got sent to my phone as a text message. And let's do a quick walkthrough just to see what's here. So we import the SMMT authentication credentials. So we need to be able to provide our credentials. We import message SMTP transport transport okay down here we build the message so we have the from email uh, reply to I didn't use but then we have the to email we have the subject we have the body we have unwrap straightforward all right so for the credentials portion you can see here they more or less did credentials new and they pass in a username and password uh, we'll get back to that a little bit later because that's sort of unique and how we need to deal with it. Um, down here, they have an example of Gmail. So they open Gmail's SMTP uh, route, which I think defaults, all SMTP de defaults to a certain port, which they set explicitly for us or implicitly for us. But if you need to change that for whatever provider you're using, you can. And then dot credentials and you send the credentials over. And then lastly, we do a mail.send and we send the email. So that's more or less it. So the next step is to figure out setting up your email client so it works with this. And that typically deals with making sure that when you pass credentials, your credentials get validated by the whatever email provider you're using and they allow it to go through. Um, in this example, they use Gmail. I care about my Gmail account. And because I care about my Gmail account, I'm not doing this with my Gmail account. Instead, I'm doing this with my Yahoo account because I care a lot less about my Yahoo account. So if you're doing this with Yahoo, um, this more or less stays the same. You change this to yahoo.com. But more importantly, 
Yahoo has a security page, and in the security page, they have a tab for manage app passwords right here. And you could generate, when you click generate, you can generate a new password for this app. So the password that you pass into the credentials doesn't have to be your password for your Yahoo account. Instead, it's just one of these passwords that you have made explicitly for this application. And that's what I'm using. This is testing. I generated it 12 days ago. All right. And then one last thing before we get into the code. In order to hide my credentials so they're not explicit, like right here and right here, and my phone number would be somewhere in here. In order to hide that stuff, I use .m. And .m, if you're not aware, it is a, a crate that allows you to uh, create a .env file and then store your credentials in there. Um, like so, here's an example. And then once you do that in your application, you call this line, which then seemingly adds your uh, .m environment variables to the running environment. And then you could either iterate over the environment bars and find the ones you want, or you could be more explicit and then just do a query as in environment bar key. And to be clear, environment bar is from the standard library. So in their example, let me go back, they imported standard library, standard library um, env, and that's what they're querying over. And that is what I'm suggesting. You can just do an explicit query for the key. And with that said, let's go to the code. All right, so I've opened my terminal, and this is the directory um, that I'm doing this work in, right? Now, if I do ls dash a, you get to see everything. I've already created a .m file, so that does exist. And then for the source code, let me just go here. This is my main file. Uh, just to do a quick walkthrough, I have I've imported the standard library environment uh, env. And then exactly like the tutorial or the example in letter, I imported what they imported. And then like the documentation in .m, I imported .m. I created a git credentials function. This is slightly different than the examples that we saw. But I did this just so I could uh, make my getting of my credentials separate from the actual sending of the email. It's pretty arbitrary, but that's what I did. So in here, we can see that I'm calling the .m OK. And then, like I was saying earlier, I'm querying for my environment variables. What to have Yahoo username, Yahoo password, and phone number, right? And then I'm just returning all three of them. So we get to main here. And in main, you can see I'm getting my username, password, and phone number. And then I'm doing exactly what they did, with the exception of I'm formatting my two because I'm inserting my phone number in here. And then here's the subject. Here's the body. And let's change this. Let's go with making a video. And that's saving. So credentials, same thing. The relay. Oh, so the URL is slightly different. I did have to look it up for Yahoo, and the URL is smtp.mail.yahoo.com. Pass in the credentials, and then I send the email. So that's the source code, and let's run it. Cargo run. email sent successfully, which means I should have it on my phone. All right, so I just got the notification. Let me make my screen big so you can see it. All right, so I have my phone out. I'm not sure if you can really see it, but it's this one. I've been sending a few of these. That's why I got some up there. But yeah, that's more or less it. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit like, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. Side of that. Peace.